Welcome everyone. Welcome to this webinar on groundwater monitoring using observations from NASA Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment or GRACE missions. I am Amita Mehta and I will be presenting this webinar along with my colleagues Dr. Erica Podest and Sean McCartney. This is an hour-long lightning webinar followed by a question and answer session. The objectives of this webinar are listed here. The first is to provide an overview of GRACE missions. There are actually two missions, GRACE and GRACE follow-on, and we will refer to these missions as GRACE missions throughout this webinar. The second objective is to demonstrate how to access and analyze GRACE terrestrial water storage data. Here's the overall outline of today's session. We will have a brief introduction to our set. Then we will have description of groundwater. Then we will have an overview of GRACE missions, followed by examples of GRACE groundwater applications. And finally, we will have demonstration of how to access GRACE terrestrial water data, groundwater data, and how to do online analysis of these data sets. We will start with a brief description about RSET. RSET is NASA's Applied Remote Sensing Training Program, and it's a part of NASA's Applied Sciences Capacity Building Program. It is set up to empower global community through online and in-person remote sensing trainings and the themes shown here, air quality, disasters, land, and water resources. RSET is focused on teaching and increasing use of science data in decision making through trainings for policymakers, environmental managers, and other professionals in public and private sectors. All our materials are free and open source, and they are available from our set website. If you use any of the material from our set trainings, such as methods or data, presentation slides, you can modify for your own use, but we request that you acknowledge the our set program when you use the material. Here is an overview of our sets 10 years of trainings. As you can see, we have trained more than 40,000 participants through more than 150 trainings from 170 countries and overall have reached 7,500 plus organizations in the last 10 years. As you can see, our set training participation has increased substantially in the last few years. Here is the RSET website where all the information and presentation materials are available. There is also an RSET listserv where you can sign up to stay up to date with upcoming trainings from RSET. With that, we will start with description of groundwater. So what is groundwater? Here is a resource, National Groundwater Association, and a lot of information is av available from this site, and some of the numbers shown here also come from this site. So groundwater is the portion of the water from precipitation that percolates into the soil. It moves downwards and fills up cracks and openings in rocks and sand. So whatever is underneath the surface, below soil moisture level, it's considered groundwater. It makes up about 30% of global fresh water as shown here. So here's the global fresh water, which is very small portion of total water, 2.5%. Out of that, the biggest water, fresh water storage is in glaciers and ice caps. And the second biggest component is groundwater. The smallest one is surface and atmosphere as seen here. It is also important to note that groundwater um, age ranges from like months to millions of years. So total groundwater volume in upper two kilometers of earth crust is about 
million cubic kilometers and out of which about 0.1 to 5 million kilometer cube is less than 50 years old. There is a lot more information about this in the paper shown here. So groundwater is the most extracted resource worldwide and it is a renewable resource but it depends on regional environmental conditions and also the rate at which groundwater is withdrawn. So renewal rate, uh, renewable, it is renewable but the rate depends on these conditions. So when we say it is the most extracted resource, where is it used? So as shown here globally, about 50% of drinking water is obtained from groundwater approximately 70% of the groundwater withdrawal is used for agricultural irrigation. About 38% 30, of land uses groundwater for irrigation and therefore monitoring groundwater is crucial for overall water resources management. So the table shown here lists the largest estimated annual groundwater extraction countries. Here is the list of countries, population, uh, estimated groundwater extraction, this is for 2010, and uh, usages are shown here. What it shows is that in most countries, especially in Southeast Asia and Middle East, groundwater is used the most for irrigation, then for domestic use, and then for industries. So these are the countries with maximum use, but worldwide groundwater is used for many uh, many usages and so it's crucial to monitor groundwater everywhere. Traditionally, groundwater is measured by water levels in water wells, water wells which are there for irrigation. They are used for estimating groundwater levels as seen in the figure shown here from USGS portal. The, these dots are locations of irrigation water wells. However, globally such water wells are sparse and water level data are not easily available. Also, there are no direct measurements of groundwater based on remote sensing observations, unfortunately, not like precipitation or soil moisture, which can be observed directly from remote sensing, but not groundwater. However, measurements from GRACE missions have been used to estimate total water storage that is combined amount of water from atmosphere all the way to ground. And these data are available on monthly basis since 2002 at special resolution of about 150,000 kilometers square globally. The two satellites, they provide uh, total water storage measurements and um, they are then used to derive large scale groundwater uh, by using additional hydrological information as we will see later. Next, we will have um, a brief review of the GRACE missions. These are the websites where a lot of information is available about both GRACE and GRACE follow-on missions. Both the missions are joint missions between NASA and German Aerospace Center DLR. And as shown in the figure, both GRACE and GRACE follow-on are twin satellite systems. So there are two identical satellites. They fly apart by 220 kilometers and they fly in formation around the Earth. GRACE satellites are in polar orbit and provide global coverage. Uh, GRACE was launched on 17th March 2002 and it ended on 12th October 2017. GRACE follow-on was launched on 22nd May 2018 and it is continuing currently and providing observations. There are three primary sensors on both these missions. Microwave K-band ranging sensors, accelerometers and global pos positioning system receivers as shown in this figure. And this is how uh, GRACE satellites work. When the satellites orbit around the Earth, distance between them is affected by gravity anomalies due to changing mass concentration on the Earth's surface. So as shown in the figure, 
these two satellites flying in formation 220 kilometers apart nominally when the first satellite passes um, over mass concentration as shown here it experiences gravitational pull and because of that the distance between the two satellites changes when the second satellite passes over the same location it also is put and in this fashion distance between the satellites um, keeps changing as they go around the earth and as mass concentration on the earth surface changes so the microwave ranging system is the one that actually measures these variations in the distance uh, between the satellites with very high precisions the gps receivers determine the exact position of the satellites over the earth and the accelerometers measure non-gravitational accelerations such as those due to atmospheric drag so here schematically it is shown how mass concentration change can change distance between the satellites so the grace measurements which is the distance between the satellites are converted to gravity or mass concentrations based on fundamentals of physics um, now subtle shift in earth's gravity occurs primarily due to water movements as water moves from one place to another that is within the atmosphere on and under land surface and also in the ocean it affects earth's gravity grace missions measure these changes in gravity and then they are interpreted as changes in terrestrial water storage or TWS. So here's some more information about GRACE terrestrial water storage data. Uh, GRACE measures about 250 gravity profiles per day. Uh, based on several days of gravity profiles together with other ancillary data, GRACE level 2 data are derived in terms of spherical harmonics coefficients of gravity. So details of this technique, how to get level 2 data can be found in, in this document here. And based on the level 2 data then, monthly mass anomalies or departure from mean mass are derived indicating anomalies and terrestrial water storage. So it is important to note that what is available is the anomaly or change in terrestrial water storage and not actual uh, mass of terrestrial water at any location. The figure here shows an example of uh, terrestrial water storage anomalies. Uh, this is an animation uh, between March 2015 to March 2016 and it shows changing terrestrial water storage in several locations. So uh, grace terrestrial water storage is measured in centimeters of equivalent water thickness. Uh, water grace level 2 data are available at a special resolution of 300 to 400 kilometer grids or roughly 150,000 kilometer square area grids. These data are further greeted at half a degree and also at one degree resolutions and monthly terrestrial water storage anomaly data are also available at the same resolutions. It is estimated that resulting errors in the monthly TWS anomalies are about 2 to 3 centimeters um, at 1 degree resolution. Um, you can refer to this paper for more information and um, more information can be found about overall um, information on terrestrial water storage data uh, that are available from uh, these references. Uh, these numbers will make more sense when we actually look at the data later on. So now how do we get groundwater from terrestrial water storage data? So as shown here, total uh, terrestrial water storage is made up of groundwater, soil moisture and also surface water including snow and frozen and liquid water. So GRACE measurements um, of total terrestrial water storage, they, they don't allow uh, vertical, vertically you cannot distinguish these components. However, uh, additional 
hydrologic information are used uh, about um, soil moisture data and surface data. Um, they are subtracted from graze terrestrial water storage data to get groundwater data as we will see um, in next few slides. So the set of equations here show terrestrial water storage anomalies. They can be used to get groundwater. According to hydrologic balance equation, um, at a given location, precipitation, which is the source, minus evapotranspiration and surface water or stream uh, discharge, they result in change in terrestrial water storage as shown here. And this terrestrial water storage can be in terms of a sum of groundwater, also soil moisture, snow water equivalent, and surface water. Mm -hmm. So if you know these components, then you can subtract from grace measurements of um, change in terrestrial water storage, and then you will get ground water storage. And this is exactly how it is done. Um, global land data assimilation system is used here to get um, these components and that's how groundwater is derived. So there is uh, GLDAS version 2.2 um, that assimilates grace terrestrial water, water data in, in the land surface model and derives groundwater. So details of LDAS systems can be found from this link uh, it's a webinar that was presented by RSET a few weeks ago and has details of uh, land data assimilation models. And the figure here shows results of groundwater storage from GLDAS version 2.2. And this is showing average of June, July, August of 2019 groundwater data in millimeters. And you can see uh, low to moderate to high groundwater um, storage derived from GLDAS version 2.2. So these GLDAS groundwater data, they have been validated with 4,000 well measurements. Based on the reference given here by Lee et al., uh, this study um, shows that GRACE data assimilation improved groundwater estimation substantially by 36% at regional scale and by 10% at point scale, so at well level scale, compared to groundwater estimates without grace data assimilation. So this is how groundwater is obtained from grace data. And uh, so GLDAS um, has made a major progress in getting um, assimilation of grace into the model and getting groundwater data, which is more accurate. This brings us to some examples of groundwater applications. This is a study by Dr. Matt Rodel from NASA Goddard. And the figure shows the rate of change or trend of terrestrial water storage from grace as equivalent height in centimeters per year between 2002 and 2050. See all the yellow and uh, red brown colors, uh, they show negative anomalies or drying and shades of blue show positive anomalies or wet conditions uh, all over. So as you can see, uh, California, northern India, here California, northern India, in the Middle East, in northern China, um, there's a negative anomalies indicating groundwater depletion. Also Alaska, uh, here, in Western Antarctic, in Greenland, um, there is negative anomalies due to loss of ice during this period. Uh, there are also wet conditions seen in the Missouri River Basin and Amazon River Basins, as you can see from these blue colors here. So GRACE observations, they allow this global picture of how uh, terrestrial water is changing, something that is not possible to do from water level data from uh, wells um, available from different locations. So that way, this is one of the advantages that Gray shows global picture of how terrestrial uh, water is changing. 
The next example shows applications of Grace data in drought monitoring. So as shown in the top panel here, um, the US drought monitor uses Grace data for monitoring dryness and wetness. Similarly, here Grace follow-on data are used to monitor groundwater anomalies in South America. And the figure shows drought-like conditions in Brazil, uh, Colombia, and Venezuela, um, and also in some parts of Argentina and Chile. Similarly, GRACE data are also used for flood detection. Uh, the example shown here is for May 2007, and the flood index is shown here showing flooded areas based on GRACE terrestrial water storage. Uh, here in the bottom panel, uh, flood uh, information for the same period is provided from the Dartmouth Flood Observatory. And these are two independent data sets and this sort of validates that GRACE data can be used for uh, flood detection. So this brings us to the last part of this webinar. Here we will see how to access GRACE data and we will also have a demonstration of how to get these data and how to conduct online analysis. So there are three data portals where GRACE and GRACE follow-on data are available. The first one is NASA JPL uh, data portal. The second one is GFC, which is German Geosciences Research Center. And the third one is University of Texas at Austin, Center for Space Research, or CSR. All three sites have GRACE Level 2 and Level 3 uh, and GRACE follow-on data also available. So terrestrial water storage anomalies are available. However, it is important to note that um, all three centers use slightly different methodology of uh, data processing. So these products are not identical. They differ a little bit from each other. But the JPL portal provides standard GRACE product and that is what we are going to look at in this uh, webinar. So this portal allows uh, direct link to get data. Not only you can choose and go access the data, but there is also an interactive data browser. This browser allows online analysis of terrestrial water storage anomalies in terms of maps and time series, and we will see a demonstration of this. There is also another interactive data analysis and download portal, which is available from University of Colorado, and this uses uh, data from CSR. This can also provide maps and time series of uh, terrestrial water storage anomalies, and data can be downloaded from here as well. Finally, uh, there is GRACE and GLDAS-based groundwater data. They are available from Giovanni, uh, and we will have a demonstration of that as well. So next, what I'm going to do is share my screen with you and show a demonstration of how to uh, access, download, and analyze GRACE data. We will look at the GPL portal first where the latest version of standard GRACE and GRACE follow-on products are available. And we will also see how a GPL interactive tool works for online analysis. And finally, we will see how to obtain GLDAS groundwater data by using Giovanni. Giovanni also allows online analysis, so we will also have a demonstration of that. So I'm going to stop this presentation and share my screen with you. So we will start with the JPL GRACE data portal. This is available from POTAC or Physical Oceanography Distributed Active Archive Center. You can get data by clicking right away on this data link. But let us see some more information which is useful. Um, there's mission objectives given here, information about instruments, documentation, 
Uh, there are some important links here, references and citation matrix, they're all available here. Let's look at this related links first. Once you go here, you will see that these the three data portals are listed here. This is the JPL, Grace Data Portal. Here, this is CSR and this is GFC. So all these uh, data are available through this site. And let's just look at JPL, uh, Grace Talus Data Portal. Here also, you have information about these missions, applications, there is news and events, there are publications, and then there is this data link. Here you have information about uh, monthly mass grids, uh, get data link, there is data updates. Um, here is something important. This is choosing a solution, which data to use, which one from GPL, CSR, or GFC, uh, and why there are three different solutions. So as we talked, it um, explains here how slightly different methodologies are used by each center and then which solution to use. So if you read this, you will find out that um, what they recommend is that you can average all three products. In here, this is uh, CSR, JPL, and GFC. These are trends in terrestrial water storage and anomalies. And here, these are annual amplitudes. So what is recommended is that ensemble mean of all three would uh, be a better product. However, uh, any one can be used um, and it depends on the application that you want to use that data for. So going back to this link again, there is grace and grace follow on data months per day. This is also important because for monthly data about uh, satellite to satellite tracking is done for about 30 days but sometimes there are some uh, days are missing because of some instrument issues or calibration issues um, so in that case um, every month doesn't have 30 days and so that information is available and that is important if you want to compare uh, different years or different months uh, you want to know how many days went into making that uh, terrestrial water storage data. So this is all very useful information and it's all available just with a click here. Then we can go to get data. Here you have access to monthly mass grids. The interactive portal or browser is available through here. Grace monthly mass grids over land. This is what we're looking for. Um, and there are other ocean related data sets also available. These data, Grace monthly mass grids over land, they are available at one degree global grids. And let us look at that. How to find and download these data. Again, the processing information is provided here. And data availability is through this link here, gridded data. This brings us back to the JPL Grace Data Portal. Click on data. You will see a number of products. Processing levels are number uh, level four, level two, level one. We're looking for TELUS, Grace, JPL Grace TELUS level three data. There are CSR and GFZ data here too. So this is JPL Talus Grace Level 3 Monthly Land Water Equivalent Thickness Surface Mass Anomaly. This is Algorithm Release 6 Version 3. And the data are available in NetCDF, ASCII and GOT formats. So here you see that data are available from 2002 April to 2017 October. So this is the GRACE mission, NetCDF one degree monthly file. You can click on this. It takes you to some more information, um, documentation, citation, uh, file listing, and 
metadata information is given here as well. To get the data, you click on data access link. There is PODAC trial where data can be directly downloaded to your computer. They are also available as open DAP and through web services, which also can be used. But for demonstration, let's just look at this PODAC trial. It takes you to the data directory. And you can see that in here, um, NetCDF data files, there are TIFF files also, and there are ASCII files also. The file name describes that it is geospatial gridded file uh, level 3. These are start and end days for this month, um, and they are in Julian days. The data are from GRACE, they're from JPL, and these two fields, they describe um, how the data were processed. So these codes like BA01, um, and this is the algorithm release, uh, they, the description of that is available from CSR uh, website. This is of course land and this is version three and this is just the format. You can get any of these files. MD5 files, um, they are uh, message digest files and they are more or less for checking whether data files are okay and they're not corrupt, they're complete. So they just provide uh, information about the data files themselves. So you can click on the file you desire and you can save on your computer, which I already have. I've saved a, a NetCDF file to look at it later. These are all GRACE files. Now easy way to go to GRACE FO would be to just say grace FO instead of grace and you will be taken to a corresponding grace follow on page. Here you have level three terrestrial water storage data available from grace follow on. Everything is the same and again you can click on any of these files and download to your computer. So here is how you can download GRACE data easily from this JPL portal. Going back, we will see quickly how to use interactive browser for analysis. So let's go back to GRACE TALUS link and go to get data and go to Interactive Grace and Grace, Grace FO Data Browser. Once you are here, you can launch the tool. And you will see the global map here. It shows water equi equivalent thickness over land. This is in centimeters. And these are anomalies, so they go from minus 30 to 30 in this case. Um, you can make it smaller. You can navigate to the year you want, so and month you want. And you can see that how the map is changing, and that is showing how terrestrial uh, water storage anomalies are changing. So this is a quick way to look at uh, map itself and how things vary from month to month by clicking here by changing months or you can go to this timeline and look at a particular year and month. Now what here you can choose show map labels so you can orient yourselves um, and here is the analysis link. This allows you to either drop a pin to a location or draw a box or select a river basin or select a basin and make time series of terrestrial water storage anomalies. So let us see, we can select a basin 
once you go and select the basin, it shows different basin. This is Nile Basin. Here you have South Francisco. Let's look at, let's pick a river basin in Mozambique, which is uh, let's see, Limpopo, I'm looking for Limpopo River Basin. Here it is. You can click on that. And now you can click Start and End Dates. We can go from 2002 April, okay, to 2019 December and say okay and then create chart. So this provides time series of water equivalent thickness um, in centimeter. And this is averaged over the Limpopo River Basin. You can see this annual cycle uh, from 2002 all the way to end of 2019 and not only it shows annual cycle it also shows how interannually um, the water equivalent thickness varied over this region so this allows for quick analysis both in terms of map and time series so we will stop this um, demonstration and now go to Giovanni which uh, makes GLDAS based groundwater data available. So this concludes demonstration of JPL portal and I'm going to switch to the Giovanni portal. That was JPL Grace Data Portal. Now we're going to have a demonstration of Giovanni and we are going to uh, search and analyze uh, GLDAS based groundwater data. For that, we are going to start with keyword search here. We will type groundwater storage and search. And here the first one is GLDAS version 2.2. So we're going to pick groundwater storage data in millimeter. These are daily data in their quarter degree resolution and they extend from 2003 February to 2020 March. So covers both grace and grace follow on uh, period. Once you select the data, you can pick analysis option. Without downloading data, you can analyze uh, them. And here there are options. There are maps, the comparison of data. Uh, there are analysis like scatter plots, vertical, across section time series analysis and some other miscellaneous analysis are available. First, we will pick a time averaged map. And here there is a temporal selection. What I've done here already is using the calendar, I've picked July and August of 2019 here just for demonstration purpose. So two months are selected and what we're going to have is uh, averaged groundwater data uh, for these two months. I picked this because they are um, peak summer months in Northern Hemisphere and have uh, rains in many regions in Northern Hemisphere. Then here there is a special selection. You can plot a box anywhere the region of your uh, on the region of your interest or you can pick a region with shape file and here you can pick countries or states um, i have picked again limpopo watershed to be consistent with what we did with um, jpl uh, interactive tool so we're going to pick limpopo watershed and when you click on the map you can see the region that you have chosen here so once you set all these options uh, you can do plot data and once the workflow launches it will tell you exactly how it is progressing and then you will get results so in this case time averaged map 
that I already have produced the map and I will share them share that with you in a moment but the other analysis I've done in addition to this map is I've picked area averaged time series and I have picked entire period 2003 February to um, end of uh, um, 2020 March so with that also I have uh, plotted time series and so here are the results here is the time averaged map over Limpopo Basin and you can see groundwater it ranges from uh, about 200 all the way to 1200 uh, millimeters in this basin and you can see the special variation within um, you can look at time series analysis that I have produced and this is from 2003 all the way to 2020 March and these are daily data in millimeters again GLDAS 2.2 groundwater storage data and you can clearly see in the basin this annual variation and interannual variation as well one more thing you can do with Giovanni is that you can download this data so this is global map um, and this is Limpopo River Basin you can download this data as NetCDF um, as GeoTIFF or KMZ or you can just have an uh, image uh, that we just saw on the screen so you can download this data so without really downloading global data you can analyze data and subset and download that subset of data uh, you can download time series as well uh, as either NetCDF or CSV file or just the image that we have here so this is the way to look at GLDAS groundwater data so what we saw was grace based terrestrial water storage anomalies from GPL portal and GLDAS based uh, groundwater data from um, GLDAS that concludes our demonstration of grace data access and analysis through JPL and Giovanni portal now to conclude this webinar we want to summarize what we saw so there are several advantages of uh, grace and grace follow on measurements they both provide unique measurements of variations in mass or gravity changes over the Earth's surface and they produce monthly maps of the gravity field these gravity variations are primarily related to the movement of terrestrial water and they are interpreted in terms of change in equivalent water thickness or terrestrial water storage TWS so using GRACE TWS along with model based hydrologic components groundwater can be obtained as we saw uh, from GLDAS we saw how uh, groundwater was uh, estimated so grace based TWS and groundwater data are available globally and they have been useful in monitoring flood and drought conditions and also large-scale groundwater depletion but there are also some limitations of these data that we should be aware of both grace and grace fo have low special resolution about 380 by 380 kilometers square or 150,000 kilometers square so this is a big footprint and that cannot resolve smaller watersheds so that is one of the limitations uh, the TWS or water equivalent depths are measured in centimeters as we saw they are much smaller compared to the earth's radius itself which is about 6378 kilometers it is because of the grace instruments precision that it is possible to measure such small water depths with even compared to this large radius of the earth but there can be errors 
um, as the earlier studies showed, it is about 2 to 3 centimeters in 1 degree resolution TWS. But regionally, it can vary. And so one has to be careful um, in using GRACE data for smaller watersheds um, and also uh, keep in mind about the, um, the, the errors. So we saw that anomalies, they can range from about minus 30 to 30 centimeters. And so errors can be um, 2 to 3 centimeters um, in that. Also, when changes in gravity are caused by mass redistribution in the solid Earth, such as in case of earthquake or due to effects of glacial processes on the mantle, it is necessary to first remove these effects from the gravity measurements and then interpret the data as TWS um, or water equivalent thickness. So that processing also has to be done. But in spite of all these uh, limitations, um, GRACE data have been useful and uh, as they, they're really useful in monitoring uh, terrestrial water or groundwater on large scale. And there are two animations that we want to share here, which shows groundwater changes over India first and then over Brazil. So the animation starts in November 2002. The anomalies are uh, minus 12 to 12 here. You can see these are the negative anomalies showing groundwater changes, uh, drying or depletion of groundwater. And you see special variation. But as you go from 2007 onwards, in northwestern part of India, there is very large negative anomalies. Uh, suggesting uh, groundwater depletion. This is the this is close to Indus River Basin, so it has impact on um, a lot of societal impacts. So this allows um, monitoring groundwater changes in large scale. Similarly, this animation shows uh, tracking groundwater over Brazil. There are also reservoirs and population. They're shown here. You can see population changing and also groundwater changing starting from 2002. These are April to June water storage anomalies. You can see negative and positive anomalies. But as we go past 2011, we notice that population increases here and so does groundwater depletion. The anomalies are negative. So looks like there is more withdrawal of groundwater and because of that uh, the negative anomalies show up in uh, after 2011. So looking at this global picture GRACE and GRACE FO make this possible. This is not possible based on surface data or well water data. So that way GRACE and GRACE follow-on are very useful in tracking overall large-scale uh, terrestrial water storage and groundwater. So before we go to the question and answer session, um, a couple of points to make here. Um, this afternoon, we will have this same webinar or same session, but it will be conducted in Spanish by Dr. Erika Podest. And please note that there is no homework for this webinar and there will be no certificate of completion distributed this time also. So this actually concludes the webinar information. We just want to share um, an upcoming RSET webinar uh, that is going to be in July, August. Uh, registration is already open. It is an advanced level webinar on using Earth observations to monitor water budgets for river basin management. Um, since this is an advanced webinar, there will be a lot of hands-on exercises and the GRACE data information covered today serves as a prerequisite for this upcoming webinar. Finally, before we go to question and answer session, uh, we want to thank uh, Drs. Hiroko Bodoa, 
uh, and Matt Rodel from NASA Goddard for helping us uh, with some of the information related to GRACE and GLDAS and also to Dr. Forrest Melton from NASA Ames for his help and feedback about the GRACE and GLDAS information. So with that, uh, now we will go to the question and answer session and uh, please type your questions in the question and answer box and we will try to answer your questions as best as we can. Uh, so uh, let's go to the question answer session. Uh, question one is, is, do GRACE and GRACE follow-on provide only TWS anomaly data and not TWS data? That is correct. Um, you, you only see um, it as uh, anomalies. And the second question is related to it. So why is base mean taken from 2004 to 2009 data for computing TWS anomalies. So um, actually what is measured is the gravity field as we saw, so it's like mass concentration. And so mean gravitational field between 2004 and 2009 is taken, um, partly because GRACE was launched in 2002. So after about several years, that middle uh, five year period was chosen six year period was chosen to get the mean gravity. And then so gravitational changes um, were subtract, were based on that mean. And then that was interpreted as terrestrial water storage. So change in gravity with respect to that reference period reflected change in TWS. And so that was, that's what you see. Can GRACE be used for oil exploration? I mean, this is a good question. I think um, it might require a lot of processing. I'm not an expert on that. And um, perhaps can be, we can find out from uh, people who are working with derivation of TWS from GRACE. Um, as we saw, um, if there's any uh, shift in, in mass within a solid earth or any other way, then we take them care of before getting to TWS. So oil, which is part of that, you know, I think it, it's also withdrawn. So I'm not sure how that is accounted for, but that's a good question. Um, whether that can be used or not, I'm, I'm not sure we can find out about that. What are the estimated annual groundwater extraction data? So old. Um, yeah, that's um, because it was available from that site. I use that. Um, although the pattern hasn't changed, uh, groundwater, these are the same countries which are there uh, extracting most groundwater. What is the difference between RLO5 and RLO6 version of GRACE? So I will uh, post that link um, to see, uh, this is described on CR, uh, CSR um, website. I will find out the link and will post it before we post this question and answer session on our website. Uh, is it possible to convert GRACE point data of one degree spatial data into quarter degree spatial re resolution using inverse distance wing interpolation. Um, I, if, if, if you see from the original data are, are at more like three degree resolution. And so they're, they're, they are actually estimated at uh, one degree using analysis of the spatial harmonics and then GL does then further downscales it to quarter degree. But you can get this data, but they're not independent. So next uh, data within the three, three degree where GRACE foot, footprint is there, within that you may not have independent measurement. That's what you have to be careful. Uh, you can always do the processing, 
And errors, uh, if you go back to uh, the slide where errors was first mentioned, there is a paper that describes how they come, came up with that error estimate. So that has to be done if you uh, change resolution. So again, that, that was one of the points that uh, was made in the summary, but we didn't talk about that, was that um, if you if you downscale data, still the information from GRACE is at coarser resolution. So um, you don't have independent groundwater, terrestrial water information within that footprint. So what is the difference between the water budget as total water budget or what is the difference between the water budget as total water budget or or groundwater budget. So uh, total water budget is, is easy because you are looking at water in all forms from atmosphere, surface, and ground everywhere. Uh, surface water budget is um, looking at just the, the top several meters of um, earth, I believe. And so uh, budget in that layer would be surface uh, water budget and groundwater budget would be more like um, how it is renewed and how it is withdrawal that um, that difference would tell you how it is balanced and this is what i'm, I'm conceptually talking about it uh, if you want to write it mathematically you may have to have several components for each um, but basically you were just kind of um, input water and output of water that they, they are balanced or they're they're looked at to get the budget so uh, sean and erica if you want to add anything please go ahead and add to any of these questions is there any reference for the anomaly of terrestrial water storage change yeah, so that is 2004 to 2009, but um, I don't believe that terrestrial water storage data are used. It's the gravity anomalies which are used, and then they are interpreted as terrestrial water. Does the terrestrial water storage in GLDAS come from GRACE data? This is question nine. Um, so. Trace terrestrial water uh, storage anomalies, they are assimilated uh, within uh, GLDAS. And um, so that way, yes, it is used, but then all other hydrological components, they are calculated. Um, some are input such as precipitation, weather data are input, and then other components, hydrologic components are then calculated. So GRACE TWS anomalies in that case, it, it, it acts as a constraint over total water storage in GLDAS. Uh, what is the special resolution of GLDAS version 2.2? It, it is quarter degree. Um, I'm looking for the question 11. Can GRACE be used for monitoring Yeah, so there are studies like that. Uh, question 12, 
what is the baseline to calculate the groundwater anomaly? Actually, it is the same years have been used. Um, and I would like to actually share with you an e email address of um, name and email address of a, a colleague who can, you can, her name is Hiroko uh, Bodoa. Uh, I'm going to type her name here. She is an expert on um, GLDAS groundwater, so overall GLDAS. So and I'm going to find her email address and post it so that. So here's the contact if you want more information about GLDAS. In the chat box, you will see the name and address of the person. Uh, Grace data are being monthly. How is this data being used in weekly drought or flood monitoring that you mention in? So, uh, if you see, it, it is really the GLDAS-based groundwater that is used. So GRACE data are used at monthly level to assimilate, but then you have almost daily, uh, in some cases even like hourly uh, data or hydrologic components from GLDAS. And so they are used for ground uh, drought monitoring. Can we use GRACE data for drought detection? Um, so yes, that uh, one of the components is uh, ground uh, groundwater. So if you just have, um, it, it, that's not the only thing that you would uh, use to do drought detection. Um, this is for for hydrologic or agriculture uh, drought. Yes, it, you, it will help you, but. Uh, that is not the only thing that can should be used for drought detection. That would be short-term drought uh, or meteorological drought because of deficit in rainfall, where groundwater may not change a whole lot uh, that period. But so, and that there still could be a short-term drought. Could anyone please tell how to remove seasonal signal from GRACE data? So a simple way would be to, um, and this is what we do for precipitation and soil moisture also, is that take each long-term monthly mean for each month and then subtract that again. So, so take mean anomaly for each month and then take that from anomalies and then that would help you remove seasonal annual cycle just like any uh, when you when you remove seasonal cycle that's what you would be doing removing annual cycle so here you are removing annual cycle of uh, TWS anomalies Is there any accuracy issue using different data Excel sources like JPL, JPL, CSR? Um, so the link was provided. Um, each um, one is derived slightly differently. Um, they're all validated. The publications also you can find, but the recommendation you find from the from the GRACE website is that ensemble mean is perhaps the most accurate. So 
So how does the centimeter of equivalent water thickness translate to depth, translate to depth to groundwater? So um, if you look at a unit area of land and you look at the column of water in that, that is what it, it's shown it's in centimeter. And um, if you subtract um, from that total water, if you subtract depths of soil moisture and surface water, then what is remaining is groundwater thickness. So if um, one of the slides shows this vertical disaggregation of water, but uh, terrestrial water. So it's basically you're subtracting depths of how much soil moisture there is, how much uh, surface water there is, and then you get groundwater thickness. I hope that is the question, if I understand correctly. Uh, does Grace report the fresh water usable for drinking and agriculture or report the total GW including high salinity water? It is total water. It is total water. Because terrestrial water storage you get from Grace is um, even like saline water would be there. Question 19, how to choose Grace TWS a product for basin water balance? JPL is standard. Does it mean it is the basic best choice? Again, uh, about the product choice, uh, we went over it. Um, you Perhaps you can try each product and see um, how it works in your water uh, basin. So the first part of your question is how to choose um, TWSA product for basin water balance. First of all, the size has to be kept in mind. Uh, this is a coarse resolution footprint. So if it's a small watershed or basin, um, you probably don't have, you just may have one or two points and that's all there is. It just gives you total water storage uh, in that. Which data to use? It's again, if you have uh, stream flow or discharge data, uh, you have other data like precipitation, evapotranspiration, then you can do um, analysis and error analysis. Uh, I'm not sure of how would you choose uh, which product to use. I would just take ensemble mean. That's basically recommended. We have research examples that utilize GRACE data for flood and drought monitoring. Um, yes, actually we do. And um, GRACE tell us or in uh, page on GPL uh, site, there are publications and applications that are listed. Question 21 is how can GRACE and GRACE follow on be adapted for watershed studies? Also, could groundwater have any link with flooding and erosion? So second part of your question, can groundwater have any link with flooding? Uh, that is, yes, we, we see studies that shows that uh, GRACE um, terrestrial water storage anomaly, they do, um, show correspondence with flooding but erosion i'm not sure um, i am not aware of any studies or i have not looked at any um, how can these data be adapted for watershed studies again uh, resolution is the biggest limitation so something like gl das can be used which helps uh, downscale grace data in a way with other hydrologic components and uh, basic uh, water energy balance physics. But then again, as we mentioned, um, terrestrial water storage data, it's not independent from point to point within that footprint. So um, you can get high resolution information from GLDAS 
to, to do watershed studies, but one has to be careful in interpretation of those numbers. Is there any pre-processing required for TWS analysis using the RL06 version of GRACE? Um, I, I believe there is a scale factor, um, if I if I remember correctly, but um, no, you, you can download the data and then use that TWS uh, data. Um, I am not, I will have to look into this graceplotter.com uh, website. Um, I'm not familiar with it. Question 24 says, what is the difference between levels of data? Um, if you look at the fundamentals of remote sensing on our set uh, website, uh, you will find out details of how levels are defined. Um, basically, raw data from satellites are uh, level zero, then level one are actually converted to geophysical uh, parameters. Level two is geophysical parameters with geolocation. And level three are uniformly gridded data. And level four are satellite data in which some modeling also has been used. So these are different levels. But we recommend that you look at the Fundamentals of Remote Sensing webinar on our set website that has this information in detail. Question 25 is, as you described that GRACE cannot distinguish between the state of water, would like to know which one is best to know the state of moisture. So again, um, there are independent measurements from satellites such as GPM, which will tell you whether snow is there, and then MODIS and WIRS, uh, they provide snow information. So there are remote sensing observations which can tell you what's liquid water, what's uh, frozen water, but in this case, I think uh, GLDAS kind of models are used in which um, forcing is used from observations and physics is used to do water energy balance. And so water state then is defined according to the model physics in, in some cases. So um, I would say that if you look at other measurements, observations, either from remote sensing or from information from model that might help. Can we download this data from GEE? Uh, I have not checked, but I will check and I'll get back to you. I will post the answer here. So question 27 is what types of wells are used, pumping or monitoring wells? Um, I am not sure um, exactly what kind of wells are used, but that Lee et al. paper um, has more information about the data they used. It could be a combination of both. What time period of observations are the TWS anomalies defined with respect to? That is 2004 to 2009 uh, with respect to that. Um, so question 29, how is the TWS at time series filled the gap? Actually, I don't think it, uh, the JPL interactive portal we saw, uh, it it wasn't really filled. It was just like, uh, you can see a discontinuity. It was just plotted as a continuous time series, but you can see that jump from October or November to 
2017 to uh, May, not June 2018. So I, in, in there, I don't think it was filled. If you look at GLDAS data, of course, it's continuous. How can uh, question thirty is how can uncertainty in grace estimates be calculated? Um, so it, it, the uncertainty given in this presentation and the paper that was referred to, it is uh, based on basically uh, theoretical how uh, based on the algorithm. Um, how, what kind of errors to expect. Um, actual error in GRACE data can only be found if you have um, all water budget, other water budget components and also um, like stream flow or discharge data that you can balance um, all of them. And then if you know uncertainty, uncertainties in all other components, only then you can actually estimate in real life of grace uncertainty. But what is shown here and what's found in the paper is that um, how would, you know, processing data, how, what does that add to uncertainty? That's what is shown here. So th these are all good questions, especially related to uncertainty. Um, it, and as you will, if you read that paper, it also tells you that it, what resolution you actually, you derive your data at, uh, uncertainty would depend on that also. So um, these are all good questions, but there are no clear answers. You just have to work uh, in your own river basin or watershed and use different sources of observations in situ, remote sensing, and then um, come up with your own judgment about you know, what works best or what might be the level of uncertainty. That's all I can say, and that's, that's true. I, it, this is really a tricky, <laughs> it's not, there's no clear answer about uncertainty, uncertainty of any of these data. Can we make aquifers on the basis of density? Um, not sure what you mean by density, but um, TWS anomalies would um, help in, in mapping aquifers, change in aquifer level, uh, levels, but I'm not sure what you mean by density. Can we use these data for groundwater analysis of small countries like Nepal, Bhutan, etc.? Um, I would say using GLDAS is a better choice in that case when there's a small country. So that um, in addition to that broad grace footprint, you also have Water energy water and energy balance physics helping uh, in in looking at uh, groundwater terrestrial water, um, and so I, I I guess in if you if it's a smaller country or small river basin then um, something like GLDAS is a better choice. Is the JPL and Giovanni data available for commercial use? Um, I think uh, any NASA data you can use, but that is, uh, we can find this information. Uh, who do you, who you have to talk to? I mean, there are uh, companies which have been using um, NASA remote sensing data, so we can find that out. Uh, you may have to get permission or contact somebody to make a contract. I'm not sure. Can GRACE satellites track human earth work or natural earth moving events? Um, so any change, any change in, 
um, gravity anomaly would be noted. How it can be interpreted, that is not uh, very clear to me. And um, we can point you to some grace uh, experts who, who may have a better answer for that. Can we generate temporal water storage data for a specific location? So um, if, if you go to that interactive um, tool from JPL that we saw, you can drag a pin and put a point there and it will tell you uh, temporal water storage difference at that location. You can make time series. Again, it's you have to keep that in mind that it's not at that point, it's the grace footprint at that location that is um, giving you our water storage data. In time average map, we just showed the unit is millimeter how to interpret it. So it is really the depth of water um, over that grid. Is it accessible? Is it possible to convert this JPS data to water level data? Um, no, I don't think it is not um, straightforward. You may have to use other ancillary data to do it, other additional data. Uh, what is the baseline of the TWS anomaly values? Uh, again, that's 2004 to 2009. Uh, that's the baseline. Does it refer to the groundwater level of the pixel at a certain time point? Or does it refer to a certain absolute value? Um, Actually, it refers to change in water storage at that pixel, um, and it is um, gathered over several days. So like over months at that pixel, this much change occurred in total water storage. That is what the observation measurement is showing. It is not absolute value, no. It is, it is the change in water at that pixel during that month. What is the physical meaning of a groundwater storage equal to 500 mil? My question is, uh, millimeter, uh, of groundwater actually is is useful. That's that um, if you if you consider water density uh, and take unit area, you can have it as a column of water over that unit area. So that you know, just like when we say millimeter of rainfall or inches of rainfall, similarly this is millimeter of groundwater. So that it that is when from GLDAS, when you see millimeters, it is absolute value. When you see anomalies from GRACE, they are not absolute values, they are actually anomalies. They are change with respect to that mean gravity field between 2004 and 2009. So again, what you see in GLDAS, groundwater in millimeter, that is actual value, ground, absolute value of groundwater depth. Is GRACE suitable to estimate TWS for small catchments? For example, less than 1,000 kilometers square? No. N no, answer is uh, clearly no, because GRACE footprint is 
150,000 kilometer uh, square. So that that is one of the limitations, a major limitation, if you want to say that it, it's it's specially coarse resolution. But then uh, before Grace, there was no way to look at global terrestrial water distribution, no matter how large scale you uh, look at, it just still gives you idea of overall water movement. Uh, and that that is the major advantage of GRACE. So I think um, for small catchment catchments, I think still um, monitoring wells probably are used, I think. Um, are higher resolution products coming? Not from GRACE, no. So because um, uh, whatever observations are there, they are uh, about 150,000 kilometers square. So you can desegregate or, or downscale using modeling like in GLDAS. So they have gone from about uh, 380 kilometer to about uh, half a degree, which is about 25 kilometers. So that is there. So you can you can use additional um, information to downscale data, but still, you know, um, grace information is just in that huge footprint. As the GRACE and GRACE Airflow can't focus on small watersheds, how can we get the data and complete the analysis on those areas? Are there any alternatives? Uh, I, I believe, and I'm, my, I'm not expert in hydrology, but what I understand is that for small watersheds, you can look at, I, I think if you look at precipitation, evapotranspiration and surface water, then you can you you can come up with total um, uh, water change you know so that uh, TWS as resulting from P minus E minus Q can can be obtained from that but um, other than that I don't think there is groundwater data from Grace useful for small watersheds. So this is not a solved problem. That's what I'm trying to say. And um, um, this question comes up again and again for small watersheds, what to do. But these are some of the limitations when you work with remote sensing data. Can we validate the missing data between GRACE and GRACE for using ground water data of a specific location? Um, if you have groundwater data at specific location, perhaps you can, yes, uh, which has overlap with GRACE and GRACE follow on. So then you can uh, use that relationship to uh, somehow derive or fill that gap. But again, uh, I, I'm not sure how accurate or what kind of uncertainties to expect in that. From which land surface models should we provide soil moisture, surface water, and snow water equivalent? NOAA, CLM, or Mosaic? Um, so <laughs> this is also uh, a question similar to what which product to use. Uh, ensemble mean is used in many cases. Um, we have um, earlier we have used NOAA model. Uh, but GRACE, uh, GLDAS 2.2, uh, it, it is based on CLM also. So I think best way to do is to use ensemble mean. That's what is recommended. Something like land information system or list that also you know, does ensemble uses all different models to come up with um, water budget.
the contribution of oil and gas extraction also accounted for in the algorithm? Um, I don't believe so, but I will check and uh, we'll get back to you on that. So these question answer, questions and answers will be posted on our website. So we will um, try and get as many answers as we can, as accurately as we can. Uh, how how come the last two animation look like they have much smaller grids? Um, actually, the animation may be smoothing uh, data, but no, it is not really high resolution grids. So uh, groundwater storage from GLDAS is not anomaly. It is actually groundwater. What is used is change in terrestrial water storage or what terrestrial water storage anomalies from grace as constraint. But then the model itself gives you all the water budget components, including groundwater. You mentioned in the last question here is, you mentioned GRACE is not applicable for small watersheds. This means that it is not applicable for countries uh, such as Chile. Um, so uh, yes, then best thing would be to use um, GLDAS kind of data, which um, has higher resolution information uh, with the help of other hydrologic components. But yes, GRACE by itself has that limitation. Can the technology distinguish between fresh and saline groundwater using the relative specific gravity? If not, are there any plans in that direction? I'm not familiar with um, any such plan. Um, there and I'm not sure how to distinguish between fresh and saline water, groundwater from satellite, that is. Does the GeoNE website give details on how the soil moisture, snow water, et cetera, corrections were made to get the groundwater GLDAS products? Um, GeoNE has a link, if you click on the parameter itself, it takes you to the documentation about that parameter, and that has a citation which you can refer to for, for that information. So how actually is groundwater derived is it, it's described in, in, in that paper. Okay, so Grace TWS, uh, how it can be validated, uh, So that is a uh, good question. I'm not sure whether there is a direct validation of TWS. Um, it, it, is the, it is the groundwater component that you can measure. It's the, it, you, can, you can measure different components and uh, come up with um, a way to, to see how accurate it is but I'm not aware of uh, TWS validation. Uh, I will look into that. Are these processing algorithms available? Hmm. And we can check with JPL. If you go to JPL, there is a contact information through that website. And we will also try and find out whether algorithms are available to use. Um, so 53, perhaps I missed, but any data on groundwater storage available in shapefile format? From GLDAS, you can look at um, 
crown water storage within a shape file as we saw for Limpopo River Basin, uh, but not from grace. If, so again, sorry, I, I go back. If you look at the interactor, interactive browser from JPL, there you can see that when you pick a shape file, it gives you an average, but I don't think you can extract that data by that shape file from um, in groundwater. Uh, if it is a big basin, uh, perhaps you can do it in GIS. Uh, this is the terrestrial water storage anomalies I'm talking about. Groundwater from GLDAS, yes, you can. You have in Geo1, you have different shape files, or you can download the data, and then in GIS, you can, you can extract it by your own shape file also. What other analysis is needed to use GRACE data in regions with large lakes or large wetland? Uh, I believe that if you look at terrestrial water storage, it should, should include um, everything. So then, uh, you have to have information about lake levels or how much water there is in wetlands. Otherwise, you cannot desegregate that grace uh, total water storage. So you have to have, as we saw, to desegregate, you have to have uh, either ground, if you just want groundwater information, you have to have that surface and soil moisture information. Uh, so if if, if it is, there are lakes or wetlands, somehow you have to have information about uh, how much water is there to desegregate it. Is there any ideal size of the study area? So again, um, if your watershed is much bigger than 150,000 square kilometer, then grace data are good. Um, smaller ones uh, would be difficult. So at, at least uh, if you have something that is comparable to 150,000 kilometers square, it's just one footprint that you have. So you have basin or watershed integrated terrestrial water storage in that case. Um, yes, I, I, question 56, it is, it is the same period that is used, I, I believe, in both, in, in GLDAS also. Can we transfer the GRACE data to any GIS software for further detail? Um, you can download NetCDF or TIFF file and, uh, in, and get that into a G GIS software uh, package. Uh, again, uh, if any interpolation or downscaling you do, uh, you, you, there will be, you'll get values but then there's no independent information other than what Grace is giving you at that course resolution. Which data should I use to get an annual summary of change in groundwater storage and what portal to use? So if you go to JPL, uh, portal, all three data sets are available from there. So, I mean, the links are available from there. So, um, CSR, um, GFC, and JPL, all data you can access through that portal. Links are available there. So, 
ideally you would download all three data sets and take mean of that and then uh, do that for the annual uh, entire year to get a summary. So if you go to just that JPL portal, you can go to get data link and go to any other uh, data link as well. Um, question 59, can we compare INSAR-based uh, subsidence rate with Giovanni and Grace groundwater data? What are the limitations? Mm. Can Mita, do... I can yeah, I answer think... this one. Yeah. So I yeah, would yeah. think that these are very uh, widely different comparisons with INSAR, um, with respect to groundwater, you're, very, you're looking at very localized areas and you're looking at changes on the order of centimeters. Um, and with GRACE, you are, these are, are huge areas. So I, I'm not sure if your comparison would be um, apples to apples, actually. Are the tools required for analysis pertaining to removal filtering of errors available online? I don't think they are available online. Um, you may contact individual PIs uh, or scientists who are actually developing uh, these analysis techniques or uh, tools. We can find out information about it. So we want to thank you for attending uh, today's session. Um, there were some great questions and uh, we will um, definitely try and uh, answer those questions before we post uh, this document online for your information. Um, so uh, as we mentioned, there is a upcoming webinar about uh, river basin water budget estimation. Again, this is going to be uh, large river basins, not small watersheds or small, smaller river basins, but we will have an application of how to use GRACE data in there. So hopefully we'll see you in that webinar as well. Um, thank you again for attending today's webinar and uh, want to thank all um, my RSET colleagues here uh, for helping. Uh, Dr. Rika Podes, uh, Sean McCartney, um, Brock Levins, uh, Jonathan O'Brien uh, and Salvin uh, Artsan Odoi, they all have helped in um, organizing this webinar in, in various ways. So thanks everyone and thank you all for attending uh, today's webinar. Again, there is no homework for this webinar and there will be no uh, certificate of completion distributed this time either. Thank you. <laughs>